Good morning and welcome to Park Street Baptist Church's online service this Sunday the 14th of March. And if you're a visitor, a very, very warm welcome to you. My name's Wayne Sell and I'm a deacon of this church. So, what's special about today? Did you go out and buy some cards and presents? Did you over Amazon or Moonpig? Have you delivered them and sent them? Well, of course, it's Mothering Sunday. Today, we, um, they say we should uh, show our love to our mums, to remember them. Do we need one day in a year to do that? I'm sure most of us do it more one day. I hope we do. I am very, very blessed. I have a wonderful mum and a wonderful mother-in-law. Yes, I did say it, a wonderful mother-in-law. But I know to some of you out there, it's going to be a sad day. You're mourning the loss of your mum. Or you just don't have a great relationship with them. All we can do in these times is really turn to God and to pray. So Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. For some of us, we can thank you for our minds, we thank you for how you've blessed us with them. And for some others, they may be mourning their loss. And there's that heartbreak there and that loneliness of not being able to see them and to celebrate them with this day. And for others, they may be uh, having not, they don't have a great relationship. It's a dysfunctional relationship. It's a broken relationship. Lord, we thank you that you're the God of miracles. There's nothing you can not do. So we pray for healing there, Lord. We lift all these different situations before you. We lift this day before you. Lord, and we thank you for this day. We thank that we are your men and women and children. Lord, we thank you that you are Lord in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you would just use each and every one of us, that we'd know your comfort and peace this day. Amen. I just want to read from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. It's difficult, isn't it? I don't know where you're at at the moment. Maybe you're not in a good place. Maybe you are feeling very weak and you're feeling very alone. But again, this is a time where God can use you. And he will. And he's there by your side. And we don't know, none of us know when we'll be going through these tough times. What we can do is thank him for when we're going through the good ones and also acknowledge and love him still when we're going through those hard times. We have a very loving God, a loving Father who adopts us into his family. And he prepares us for these days, these days of troubles. We don't want them to come. I know I don't. I know I struggle lots. But let me just read Psalm 23 to you, which I hopefully will give you comfort wherever you may be right now. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amazing verses. I really like the first one. I was just thinking about that um, he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. There's been research recently, or in the last few years and stuff, about how the mind works when it's by those green pastures, when it's by water, and that it improves by a fifth. I don't know about you, but when I'm in trouble, when I'm struggling, there's nothing like walking by a stream, lying down in the grass, and maybe even dead, just pondering that time about how good and how loving and how gracious God is in our lives. 
Maybe we should all do a bit more of that. Be still and wait upon the Lord. Just to sit there and rest. To have that conversation with him before we face those trials. Do you notice how those verses come at the beginning? To me, it's again God being gracious to us and generous to us, but He's saying, Rest, prepare yourselves. But also know that He's going to be with us every step of the way. When we're going through those dark valleys, He is there with us. We're going to sing in a moment, Cornerstone. And of course, there's Christ alone, Cornerstone, weak made strong in a Saviour's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. So we thank Nick and Michelle for leading the, the worship song for Cornerstone. Then we're going to sing Come What May. And uh, Paul, Joe and Sam will be leading that for us. Because come what may, I will lo love you every day. I will love you now and evermore.
a moment we're going to be listening to J. John as he carries on with his series talking about the Ten Commandments. Today it's on idolatry. But before we do, we are going to sing one last song. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Today's reading is from Exodus 20 verses 1 to 17. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. 
Remember the Sabbath by key, Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your fa father and mother, so that you may live long in the land of, your, of the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house, you shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or his male or female servant, or his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. Welcome to God TV and welcome to our series on the Ten Commandments. We're down to number two and if you've missed any of them or you want to see them again, please go to the God TV website and look at the series and you can listen to them again. Number two, I've titled Know God. How do you think my wife would feel if she noticed my wallet open and she saw a photograph of another woman? Do you think that would bother her? Do you think, oh, well, my husband, he's entitled to his privacy? Or do you think she will say, who is this woman? How do you think my wife would feel if she discovered that the other woman and I had a little thing going? When I felt down and I was discouraged, I, I like to turn to this other woman. Do you think that would bother my wife? Would you be surprised that my wife was angry and jealous and would want to tear the photograph into pieces? These are pretty dumb questions. Why? Because she is my wife and she is entitled to me making that commitment to her alone and you know something i want to why because i love my wife and i made vows to my wife that little scenario that i've just painted for you is the issue with the second commandment we find the second commandment in Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 to 6 and this is how it reads. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for the Lord your God is a jealous God who will not share your affection with any other God. It's a love issue. My wife doesn't want any rivals for my love and God doesn't either. In the Old Testament, idolatry is called adultery to God because idolatry is unfaithfulness. We read in the Bible, you have prostituted yourself by bowing down to idols. You see, the problem with idols is that they restrict our concept of God. So we read again in the Bible, to whom will you compare God? What image will you compare him to? Again, in the Bible, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen, 
from gold, silver or stone. You see, we could never shape, paint or chisel anything that would adequately represent God. Now, people have argued that if images help us in our worship of God, then they have value. The problem is that aids to worship can easily become objects of worship. God knows that any image that we might use to portray him would depict him as less than he truly is. And eventually we would begin to conceive of him in ways that mirrored the image we had constructed. I think it's incredibly ironic that while God was giving the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai, the Israelites were engaged in the very activity that this commandment forbids. They wanted a visible representation of the living God and God said no. The image they made hindered rather than help their worship. Now, what does this commandment mean for us today? What are today's images in our world that would hinder our relationship with God? What are those photos in our wallet that could divert us away from a good, healthy relationship with God? Idolatry occurs when we hold any value idea or activity higher than God. Today, we idolize physical beauty, sex, wealth, fame, power. Dr. Feelgood is the modern form of idolatry. Me, myself and I. The second commandment could read do not make yourself an idol. We live in a society much like the ancient Greeks in which the body is worshipped and the goal to achieve perfection of the human form. Hercules and Aphrodite were the ideal. Do we treat scales, weight scales, like an idol, bowing to what we see, what they say about us, and letting their verdict determine how we feel about ourselves. Although it is right, of course, to care for the bodies that God has given us by cleanliness and nutrition and exercise, we should be very careful not to idolize one specific form, either the anorexic appearance of most models or the surgically enhanced image. Take technology. Has technology become an idol in your life? Most teenagers will send over 600 texts a week. Some people spend over 50% of their free time on the internet. Watch what you worship. Don't worship what you watch. Technology is good, but it can easily become an idol. Take superstitions. Did you know that superstitions are a form of idolatry? Some people observe them from unconscious habit and others believe 
that superstitions can protect them. Superstitions such as avoiding walking under a, a ladder, remarks such as touch wood, acknowledge other powers and other gods. I remember noticing that a friend of mine on her key ring had a rabbit's foot. And I said to her, why have you got a rabbit's foot on your key ring? Ah, she said, that's to bring me good luck. And I said, but the rabbit wasn't lucky. How can an unlucky rabbit bring you any luck? And she was like, oh no. And she took the rabbit's foot off the key ring and threw it away. What do we think is going to bring us good luck? When superstitions rule the lives of people so that they are afraid of going out on Friday the 13th or obsessive behaviour over a broken glass, these are very dangerous beliefs. Some hotels do not have a 13th floor because people refuse to have a room on that floor, which is just strange because of course we all know, don't we, that floor 14 is floor 13. Some people won't fly on an aeroplane if they're booked into row 13. But I mean, how is it possible? Is lightning gonna strike and only wipe out row 13? Of course not. Such superstitions are an acknowledgement of other powers and other gods, other spirits, which we are allowing to have influence over our lives. Many people begin the day by looking at their horoscope and there are numerous biblical references to any kind of magic that can predict future events. Listen to what the Bible says. Let no one be found among you who practices divination or sorcery, that's astrology, interprets omens, engage in witchcraft or cast spells or is a medium or spiritualist or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. I mean, did you hear that? Anyone who practices these things is detestable to the Lord. Halloween celebrations for many people are evil. Although people celebrate Halloween in different ways, it remains at its core an event that glorifies the dark and evil. Children and adults dress up as witches, vampires, ghosts. This is hardly harmless. We should encourage children to care for others not scare others and to know the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. Today, one of the most pivotal beliefs is choice. We are consumers in every area, including faith. We live in a pick and mix culture. The guiding principle is what feels best for you? What works best for you? And if you don't know what you stand for, you will fall for everything. How do we describe God? God's best description is Jesus Christ. He is the best description for God. Jesus Christ, as the Bible says, is the image 
of the invisible God. Again, the Bible says the Son, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Jesus came to make God visible. Jesus tunes our spiritual receivers to the frequency of God's transmission. Radio stations are assigned frequencies and we must tune into the correct frequency of the station we want to receive. It is sad that the benefits we expect idols to give, God actually promises to give us. God knows that the images offered by the world are empty. God knows that if we pursue them in the end, we will find ourselves deceived and disappointed because of what we have experienced. The Bible says they make idols, but the idols will disgrace their makers for they are frauds. They have no life or power in them. Idols are worthless. They are lies. Again, the Bible says their idols are silver and gold, human handiwork. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but they cannot see, they have ears but they cannot hear, noses but they cannot smell, they have hands but they cannot feel, feet but they cannot walk, nor can they make a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them and so will all who trust in them. It couldn't be clearer what the Bible teaches about this. The turning point in our lives is when we stop seeking God, the God we want, and start seeking the God who is. The God who offers us forgiveness. The God who offers us freedom. The God who offers us fulfillment. The God who offers us friendship. This is the real God. God who offers us forgiveness which he purchased for us on the cross so that you and I can experience cleansing and forgiveness for everything we've ever done wrong and be set free from the past. Freedom. Jesus said, if you obey my teaching, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. True freedom comes in knowing Jesus Christ, the one that embodies truth. Fulfillment. To know Jesus means fulfillment. It means true contentment. Whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. That's what the Bible says. We will not be disappointed. And that is a guarantee from God. The good news is that Jesus Christ wants to be known and we can know him today. We can know him. Knowing Jesus enables us to see through all the illusions, the facades, the images. God's desire is to mould us into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. The media says image is everything. 
the only image that is important to have stamped in your heart and mind is the image of Jesus Christ. Christ is calling us to a loyalty to himself that supersedes all other loyalties. If you seek fulfillment from things, you won't find it. But in seeking Christ, you find the most fulfilling life imaginable. What shape is your God? What do you idolize in your life? Do you have any idols in your home? I think it's remarkable that what God commands that we have nothing to do with, we actually go to museums to look at and collect as art objects in our homes. Do not decorate your home with idols that God condemns. Clear up your homes. Do you have books on the occult, witchcraft or astrology? Get rid of them. Do you have lucky charms? Get rid of them. Do you have a Ouija board? Get rid of it. Do you possess statues and idols? Get rid of them. Let's dethrone our idols. There's only room for one woman's picture in my wallet, and her name is Killy, my wife. And there's only room for one God in my heart, and his name is Jesus. Jesus dwells wherever people let him in. Now, we may reject God's warning by neglecting this commandment, but as Jonah in the Bible learnt the hard way, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. Have you bowed to Jesus, the true and living God? If you haven't, do that today. Are you superstitious and involved in practices which God has forbidden? Will you repent today and stop? Have you ever had your fortune told by tea leaves, palm reading or a crystal ball? Then you need to repent. Have you read or followed your horoscopes? Then you need to repent. Have you attended a seance or a spiritualist meeting? Then you need to repent. Have you ever had a reincarnation reading? Then you need to repent. Have you ever played with a Ouija board or a tarot card? Then you need to repent. Have you consulted a medium? Then you need to repent. Have you ever practiced channeling? Then you need to repent. Have you ever sought healing through magic, spells or charms? Then you need to repent. Are you fascinated with evil and the occult? Then you need to repent. Have you ever attended witchcraft or voodoo activities, then you need to repent. Are you in a Freemason or involved in Freemasonry that is not compatible with Christianity? You need to repent and leave. God's way 
of healing us through confession and forgiveness works not only for our sins, but also for our ignorance as well. And we must confess and receive forgiveness for any occult involvement, whether it was done intentionally or in ignorance. The Bible says they turned to God from idols to serve the true and living God. That's what we need to do. We need to turn from idols and serve the true and living God. A radical change of allegiance from idols to the living God. If you haven't, haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, Redeemer and King, accept Jesus now. Pray this prayer with me if you want to accept Jesus. Jesus, I bow before you now. I acknowledge you as my Lord and as my God. I know I have broken your commandments and I thank you for your blood that was shed on the cross for me. I ask you now to forgive me, cleanse me, set me free from the past. I invite you into my life now. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence and your peace. Help me to build my life on you. Amen. How wonderful if you prayed that prayer. May you know God's peace and presence and may you keep on keeping on. If you know that you need to repent because of what you've heard this morning, join me in this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I bow before you. I know I have broken your commandments. I know I have done wrong. I know I have worshipped evil, darkness, idols. I truly repent now. And I thank you that your blood that was shed on the cross cleanses me. And I pray for that cleansing now. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my mind. Deliver me from evil. Fill me now with the power of your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence and your peace. Help me to walk in the light and to fix my eyes on you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. Amen. I hope that today you have been truly inspired and encouraged. Welcome to those of you that have received Jesus and for those of you that have repented and rededicated your life to Jesus, please visit our website canonjjohn.com. You'll find resources there that will help you in your journey of faith. Follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Canon J. John. May the Lord bless you. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Be blessed and be a blessing. Amen.